So you've got through P1 and you've got through M1. Now we go on to P2. There's a change of focus once we get to P2 because for P1 and M1 we've largely been looking at how theoretically you would plan a project for a given company, um, looking at the methodologies and looking at the steps. Now we move on to solving a specific problem, which is Justin and his driving school, and how he can move from a paper-based system, where he would make appointments using his diary, to an app that you're going to create to allow the appointments to be made using the app, and to also incorporate some other features as well. But more of that later on. Let's look first at the specification. This is from page 7 of the spec. Again, I strongly recommend you have a look at this because it aids your understanding hugely. The overview of this particular task is to gather client requirements for an application solution. So this is all about gathering what you need to know to actually create the app. Uh, this, this list that I've drawn from page 4 of the specification is everything that the moderator expects to be within this particular task. It looks like a long list, but actually, if you break it down and do this bullet point by bullet point, it really isn't too taxing at all. I'm going to create six different videos that will take you through each of these bullet points um, and will help you understand exactly what you have to do. But we are going to start at the top, it so happens, and obviously we're looking at user requirements and we're going to be looking at functional requirements and what the application should do. This first part is by far the most important part of this task. If you get this right and you figure out everything the application should do, then the rest of it flows quite easily. If you make mistakes in this first part, the rest of it becomes more difficult to unpick, a bit like the waterfall method, and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So. Again, this from the guidance, establish and document specific client requirements. The establishing, I'm going to pause there for a second, this takes on two parts. Part one is all about the letter. And this letter is on Google Classroom. It's the one from Justin that details what it is that he wants. But another part of this is about you asking questions you are going to have to contact Justin and you're going to have to ask him some questions and within that you're going to need to show some understanding of how you might gather information. More on that later. But this notion of gathering information through open questions, closed questions, um, yes, no, true, false questions and using techniques like funneling uh, that also forms a part of this task, but we'll get to more on that later on. So once you've done that, the next thing you need to go to is the is to document the constraints and the limitations. And you might think that these are both the same thing, constraints and limitations, but think about constraints as more the platform that you're going to use and limitations as being something more like the budget. Anyway, that's towards the end of this task but we're going to start by looking at how you establish and document the specific client requirements. So, the most important thing to understand at the start is the difference between core requirements and optional requirements. So, you have the needs, which are the core requirements. These are the requirements that are necessary for the app to do its job non-negotiable if they're not there then the app isn't doing what Justin has asked but then you have the wants which are known as the optional requirements these are perhaps elements that Justin wants but that he doesn't necessarily have to have and it's for you as the application designer to decide from Justin's letter what it is that he needs and what it is that he wants. You will then write to him and explain to him how you see it, that these things are clearly necessary in order for him to achieve his goal, but some of the other things that he's asking for, maybe he can have them, but he doesn't have to have them in order for the project to be a success. 
So how do you do this? What you will need to do is to forensically analyse his letter. And I genuinely mean that you are going to have to gain an intimate understanding of what he is saying in his letter. In that short letter that's less than an A4, uh, an A4 piece of paper in length, you are going to have to take out your highlighter and go through it and figure out every single thing that he's asking for. Because don't forget, he's not an app designer. He's a guy who's identified a need. He's seen other driving schools like Red, who've got these wonderful apps that people can, can use to book their appointments. And his customers will have been asking him, have you not got an app? Why, why do I have to ring you up to make a booking? He doesn't want to lose business. He needs to keep up with the other driving schools. So you need to look really carefully at his letter and pick out what his needs are and what his wants are. And don't forget, in business speak, the needs and the wants are known as core, which are the needs, and optional, which are the wants, requirements. So that's your first job, is to go through his letter and pick out the needs from the wants, the core from the optional requirements. So once you've done that, make that list stating everything that the application should do. So for example, you will need to enter a date. So you will need to enter a time and a date when you wish to book the lesson. And you have to go through your letter and make a list of every single uh, thing that this application should do, every function that it should perform. Make sure you put this into good business speak English. What you describe should be better than what Justin's describing in his letter because you are the expert. The trainee expert, admittedly, but the expert nonetheless. For each function that you are stating that, that should happen with this application, we also need to know, is it a core and is it an optional requirement? And why do you think that? Because you're going to need to let Justin know that you understand that X and Y he absolutely needs, but Z and Q, well, he can have them, but they're not they're not fundamental to to his business and they are something of an add-on as a, of, a, of a luxury if you like so that's your first job once you've completed that part we can then go on to stage two mm -hmm.